Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I went out there and shook hands, not Chuck's, because he was late. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. <laughs> anyway, welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to convene the meeting right now and have roll call. Director Ferris? Here. Director Pulse? Here. President Henry? Here. And uh, Director Swan? Here. All right. Are there any additions or deletions to the meeting, to Staff the no. agenda? Staff has no. How about oral communications? Uh, anyone who would like to talk about something that isn't on the agenda? And I see Virgil's hand back there. Yeah, hi, Virgil Champlin. Virgil. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is an item similar to this on the agenda, but this doesn't particularly um, affect that discussion. So I hope I'm correct in, in, in bringing up now. Um, the recent um, uh, um, funding for our capital improvement um, is lacking one important thing, and that's a two-page executive summary that discusses uh, the funding mechanism, who the major players are, how much we're really going to get, and um, and what projects this is going this this funding is going to to um, support. <clears throat> and, and, and I'm talking about something that has a little bit of detail, but is mostly a summary. So, because as you know, this wasn't recorded by community television, and that's that's a real loss. But um, it would be nice to see that and to have something to refer back to when it fails, so we know where, where we went wrong, or when it succeeds, so we know what to do again. Thank you. And Larry? Thank you. Uh, I just, I'm not sure that you want me to give my summary right now. I think we're going to get to it later, right? Uh, about, about fire management planning? Actually, it's not on the it's agenda. It's not on the agenda. So go ahead and do it now. Oh, okay. Well, I, just, I wanted to start out by saying I've had these really great interactions with Lou and Rick um, about fire management planning for the district. and. Among the best results are that the district has really done a lot of work on fire management planning that I wasn't aware of. And that includes two major things. One is um, Jen started out, I, I guess it actually was Betsy, uh, created a, the beginnings of a really good management plan. And I'm really pleased to see that. And the second part of it is that Rick and the district staff have already gotten way ahead of where I thought we were, and that is inventorying all the infrastructure that's related to, um, you know, the risks associated with some kind of big wildfire. They're prepared to um, interact with the firefighting headquarters, wherever that turns out to be, to identify where the vulnerable places are and what needs to be done. So that's a really important part, but there are some other things like uh, cooperating with the other um, fire-related agencies in the valley that we're starting to work on. And so we've made some really good progress just in an ad hoc way um, with the state parks and also with CAL FIRE. And so we're hoping to get more information from them and to um, proceed you know, in, in some sort of an organized process. And I'll leave it to Rick and Lou to figure that out exactly, but I, I'm just really pleased, you know, with the, with the progress that we've made. I think we're going to talk about it some more in the time slot that was allocated for the Environmental Committee, but since Jen is going to be away, then we're going to meet somewhat informally, I guess, to just try to keep the progress going. That's, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Have anything they want to say? All quiet out there <laughs> on the western front. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's move on here then. Um, so, item four A. <clears throat> Up here. 
Yes, on October 18, 2018, uh, Balance High Optics installed a real-time station at the Fall Creek Fish Ladder at the request of the district. The real-time station replaced a single sensor that uh, we had in place that was damaged by the storm events that we had that resulted in the uh, FEMA disaster. The real-time station has two sensors, one for a backup and reports calibrated directly to the district's data system, which is used to actively manage the district's diversions. Um, this is required that we must report daily uh, diversion flows as part of our, uh, our permit, our water rights permit, uh, and the uh, use permit. Um, uh, we also put a second sensor in. Uh, Balance has a sensor in place on Clear Creek since August 2015. This sensor is a real-time and is used in the summer and dry months for bypass flows required on Clear Creek. Monitoring of the Clear Creek real-time sensor has reduced man hours intensively. The district has an easement with a property owner of, it was back in the 70s that we entered into this easement that allows 30 gallons a minute, I think the easement reads, 30 gallons a minute shell cross the district's property onto this individual's property. The 30 gallon a minute easement was given to this homeowner for uh, to be able to pass through his property as we weren't landlocked to get to the district watershed, but his parcel made it possible where we could walk right up onto the district property and intake. We had an intake structure, we didn't have to go a mile or so around, and we went right up his driveway and had access. Um, back in those days, we had to move in materials and so forth for chlorination. There was uh, uh, tanks for chlorination. Was chlor we uh, started the use of chlorine gas there. So this access was very valuable. Um, to maintain this 30-gallon minute easement, we have an ongoing disagreement with the, home the, the, the newest homeowner that lives there. The original homeowner has sold the property. Um, some years ago, and this homeowner has been there for some years now too, but he constantly calls and, and complains to the district that he's not getting his 30 gallons a minute. So what we would do is we would go up almost daily uh, with a stop stopwatch and a five gallon bucket, and we would calculate how much water is going down to this property. And usually it was over the 30 gallons a minute. So it was a considerable amount of time that staff would go up into the creek. Um, as as talk, technology's got better, we went, uh, we had balance installed a real-time sensor. Now I think he checks it himself, or James does it. We do it right on, right off line, off the website, um, and there's no more going up there. I'd say a considerable amount of staff time uh, and weekend staff time, because he would call on the weekends, and because flow flows would change in the creek, just with you know, as the sun's out or it's foggy day, it's amazing how uh, Clear Creek will change anywhere from 10 to 15 gallons a minute just with a foggy day versus uh, a bright sunny day with the redwood trees. So this station, uh, monitor, we monitor this station for an operational benefit to the district. Um, we went back and forth with Balance Hydrology to, to lower the cost. Um, so, and that's why this is supposed to be in the last uh, month's agenda, but we had issues with the price. Um, James did negotiate this contract with Balance. We removed all the monitoring um, for Foreman Creek. We didn't need Balance to, to real-time monitoring. The district was doing real-time monitoring um, at the treatment plant, and we did not need that service. And we cut back the calibration uh, from, what, monthly to bi-monthly or quarterly? task on here. The, um, in the water year 2019 monitoring effort will include bi-monthly site visits to Clear Creek and quarterly site visits to Fall Creek to collect baseline data, so calibrate and make observations and measurements. We felt a monthly calibration of Fall Creek, it was in a basically in a stelling well that it, it wasn't in, in it's in a, uh, a developed creek bed where the, the the flows and the height of the water and ripples and so forth didn't affect the equipment, so we didn't need that type of that type of calibration. And we, so we cut this way back. So we cut this contract back from forty thousand, and actually cut it back from the previous year, and got forty thousand, and we cut it back to this year 
to get what we needed uh, to 20,944. Now the other, oh, that's the next one. Um, so, and that's the operational. And we have a, the next agenda item will be for the uh, stream monitoring. But um, I'd be happy to answer questions. James is here. You'd be happy to answer questions. We're staff <coughs> recommending that the board adopt uh, or allow uh, the, the district manager to enter into a contract to uh, for water year 2019 uh, for uh, operational gauging on Clear Creek and Fall Creek. Accept their proposal. Question: The uh, the twenty thousand estimated cost was that in the budget you just approved? Yes, it is in the budget. At forty or twenty? Forty. Forty. Is it forty? So we're saving twenty. Mm -hmm. But the only reason we're putting this monitoring process in is to satisfy this one homeowner. No. So there's two different gauges. The one at Fall Creek is for monitoring monitoring the stream flows there for the water right of Felt. We have to have so much water going by the dam at Fall Creek, and so that's what that monitors. And then the Clear Creek one is for that, to make sure that we know that there's 30 GPM going down Clear Creek all the time. And we don't even have to go out in the field. We say it right on the computer now. And so we don't have an hour, two guys going out there do a bucket test every morning. And, and this is during the summer months. It doesn't happen during the winter months. Obviously, there's plenty of water during the winter months. So, that's what Does that mean for the Clear Creek monitoring, they, they don't need to do bi bi-monthly, or they, they can just do summer months? Because then, otherwise... It's yeah, so that is bi-monthly during the summer months. It's from that one, the Clear Creek run one runs from June to December. Right, it's not a full year. It's okay. just during the, the summer months when the, when the stream flows are down. Yeah, right. Because otherwise the rest of the time we're exceeding the, 30 hours. Then. The one at Fall Creek is all year okay. round, because that's a year... We have to monitor that year all, all year round. Yeah. So. Um, on the Clear Creek one, how often do we need to get access to our facilities up there? Things, well, are, well, things have changed. Um, after uh, 1982 um, storms and floods, it washed out the facility at the lower end. The uh, pipeline was washed out. The district came back in, and that's when we had the idea and the engineering of moving ahead with the five mile pipeline. We do not need that easement to go through on a daily basis. It's good to have the easement to be able to get onto our property, but we have no facilities on the lower end anymore. But we do probably cross his property, uh, not uh, other than to look at the gauging station, but probably look across his property a handful time a year to get to the upper watershed. It's another form of access, but we don't use it daily like we used to. Yeah. We used to have a live facility there. I mean, I guess, I guess my question is, you know, is it does it really give us a ROI on, on having it if I mean if there's a cost? But if out of this twenty thousand, it's five thousand, and you think it's a good balance, then but that but that's that's a basis. I, for I the think question. it's a good balance, and it works. It works well with with fisheries when we talk about bypass, bypass flows in our stream flows and we say, hey, we're letting 30 gallons a minute go by here. And uh, fisheries seem to like that. You know, that, that we always come back and say, well, the Clear Creek we're letting. And we have a broken record. We have, you know, um, the actual data for it. Um, and it's at the bottom of our watershed. There's no way we could follow the cut back if we didn't have the easement. Um, and, and I doubt if he would turn it the easement. So it's not, it has to be mutually. It, it it is, I it think that would be a question for council if, if one side could terminate. They should probably be usually the easement. Usually easements that are granted to somebody, you can say, I don't want to use it anymore, and you can terminate. But I haven't looked at that easement right. in a long time. But I could send that easement to Gina and we can get a, a, a quick payment. And the second question on Fall Creek. So if we were to somehow not be periodically in violation of our Fall Creek water right during summer months uh, or during the was it fall months? Would we need this monitoring? I guess I, I mean not to try to be funny, but I don't know. We know if we're in violation or not by not having the monitoring. Well, by by the water right, by by getting that fixed, which is something we'll need to talk about at a later right. time. But if we had that fixed in such a way that it wasn't an issue anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if that issue went away, I just don't know if we could ever get away with the monitoring to say how much we're bypassing. Because mm -hmm. right now, our water, uh, our permit, and our water rights are tied to you know feet per second that we have to monitor. Yeah, it's all tied. Okay, but if, it's if all that could change, the, it's all tied into it's Santa all tied Cruz into. and all that stuff. Right, and they're doing their thing, right. and so it seems correct. like there's an opportunity here to. That's correct. Maybe fix this because that's correct. No one has ever met. This water right, that's correct. Some of the time, right? That's correct. So I mean, it's one of these things of you know. Yes, it could change. Okay. It could change, um, and and I'm not sure with a little training that we could not take over the calibration at a later date too, and don't even need because the equipment's ours. We purchased the equipment. It was damaged mm -hmm. in the storm. So perhaps maybe the district staff could take over calibration. I'm not sure about that. But I imagine with a little training, we probably could. And is this a bid? Do we, did we bid this? Or is this, we, this is not a bid. This was a contract that we started all the way back five, six years ago with Balance Hydrology as part of the street flow monitoring program. Does it need to be bid next year? I would say yes. But I would also say that probably next year I would be discussing with staff ending the uh, stream flow monitor. I'm not sure why continuing. Except for Except for the operational. Yeah. Yes. But that's the next one we're going to do, the next one. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Any questions? Virgil? Yes. Um, I was curious, um, the bi-monthly uh, calibration, is that a legal requirement? Or is that a requirement because of the, the environment that these sensors are in or the robustness of the sensors? It has to do with the environment they're in, the changing stream bed, leaves plugging up rockways where water's going through and it'll change the water level and then it'll be spilling over somewhere else. So it's more of a maintenance <coughs> cleanup thing to make sure that the same stream flow is going by that gauge at all time. Thank you. And the Clear Creek has, because of the topography of Clear Creek, has communications issues that seem to always have to have it tweaked or relocated, the antennas. It's a cell phone that puts out and it's in the, and you know how Clear Creek Canyon is, it has tough communications there. So that's a problem ongoing as well that they, that they deal with is the communications and battery life. Because if it doesn't send out and make the connection, it just keeps trying and runs the battery down. So that one takes some minutes. I, I just was curious if you, I put monitoring this, um, the data the correlation with other data or stuff like that will actually start to tell you that um, maybe we need to send somebody up there to clean it out. Gotcha. Thank you very much for the good explanation. Anybody else? Okay. So, 4B? Um, I think I need a motion to... Oh, uh, sorry. Accept your vote. Got carried away with myself. I just to authorize uh, the district manager to execute the contract. There you go. <laughs> just to authorize him? Yes. I'll make a motion that we authorize the district manager to execute the contract with Balance Hydrology for operational engaging. Yes. I would I would add to that uh, motion the specific uh, addressing of water year 2019 because we were doing it for five years and I just want to make sure it's clear. This isn't just 19, it's 20. It says water year 2019, it's water year 2019. Okay, it yes. ends in December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it ends in October. But that's why that's the full year. Yeah. Yeah. So has the um, motion been changed? Yes, it has. Okay. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. And Rick, if you can bring all contracts for services in at 50%, that would be really good. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good bring strategy. It. Double them in the budget, cut them, and bring them aboard, and yeah. I'm going to take credit. Well done, Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're at 
On to the next item then. Okay. Okay, this is another uh, stream flow uh, temperature monitoring. Uh, in March of 2002, uh, the district received a letter from the Department of Fish and Wildlife indicating that our current diversion operations uh, of the district may be having an adverse impact on stream, on in-stream flow needed to maintain fisheries resources, water diversion activities on our streams, Peavine, Silver, Foreman Creek, Harmon Creek, Clear Creek, Sweetwater Creek, Creek Bennett Spring, Bull Spring, and Fall Creek, and the San Lorenzo River watershed can directly and indirectly impact stream, which are known to provide habitat for uh, coho salmon. Uh, ongoing uh, diver uh, diversion operations that do not maintain suffi sufficient flow for coho may require an incidental take permit pursuant to Fishing Game Code and California regulations. Uh, in water year 2014, and, uh, which is October 1st, 2013 to September 2014, the district began a long, longer term stream flow and water quality monitoring program of all of our diversions tributaries to the San Lorenzo River uh, to determine the impact of the San Lorenzo Valley diversions on coho salmon and steelhead habitat. The district has been working closely with the Department of Fish and Wildlife to evaluate operations and quantify stream flow and temperatures to ensure district operations are not adversely impacting all life uh, history stages of coho salmon. Uh, as uh, is typical after five years of monitoring, we have developed a more refined monitoring and diversion management program to address uh, their main questions and establish baselines. The data will be used to further evaluate potential impacts of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District diversions on stream flow temperature. Uh, the purpose will focus on stream flow temperature and monitor reduced the time and budget up to uh, we've done this and we've, we've, we've substantially reduced <coughs> the time and budget associated with monitoring program uh, and we suggested several changes to the previous monitoring uh, including we suspended the operations on the Bull Creek and Bennett Creek gauges we suspended operations on the three late summer San Lorenzo River main stem gauges below Boulder Creek uh, below Clear Creek and below Fall Creek. We re reduced monitoring to seasonal gauging to, uh, May to October on Foreman Creek, Peavine, and we continue to maintain the Lumpico Creek gauge as a year-round gauge for at least two years until uh, the Lumpico uh, agreement we can uh, renegotiate. Um, we're working, uh, also we we're working to see if the Santa Margarita <coughs> Groundwater Agency to continue monitoring the Zianni Creek gauge, conduct monthly measurements of the San Lorenzo River at Ben Lomond County Park to con continue providing key data to the annual summer uh, studies. Uh, this is something that John Ricker plans to take to uh, the Santa Margarita uh, Committee to try to get more monitoring of surface water into that committee. We have substantially reduced our monitoring over the years. We do have a substantial investment in this. I do believe to date, I don't have all the, all the background that Jen would have to give you, but I do believe that our sources have shown that no adverse effect, the district sources, uh, diversion, <coughs> no adverse effect on temperature or flow to the San Lorenzo River. Um, but we do want to continue. I think this will probably be mostly the last year of uh, the monitoring. And hopefully we can shift some of this monitoring over to Santa Margarita groundwater as part of their findings. This also has been substantially reduced. Um, I think we're asking $48,851.44. Okay, $40,000. It wasn't $100,000. Forty-eight thousand eight hundred fifty-one forty-four. Have we budgeted at a hundred? I do believe so. I'll double check with Stephanie. I think we budgeted at a hundred thousand. I want to say she. Had, I want to say it used to be a hundred. She knew we were reducing it. I want to say it was around. Yeah, I think James was eighty. Okay. okay. And we just considerably reduced this in the last month. We missed the fifty percent. Yeah. That's <laughs> that was <laughs> And this, and that wasn't purposely, I mean, it's just, some of the stuff it just wasn't needed, and, and we renegotiated the contract with him and kind of told him, that, hey, 
it's just still too much and we're, you know, we're going to have to bid it out, the board's not going to like it. Um, we went back and forth and we needed some reductions. So staff's asking you to authorize to do a, um, a motion and authorizing the district manager to enter an agreement and I'd be happy to try to answer questions. But it, it's unfortunate we couldn't get this back to you and before general application. Yeah, I have a question. Farther down on from the memo you were reading from, it says fiscal impact. Please add this once the revised scope and budget are available. Are we at a point where we can approve this? Yeah, well, what happened was Jen wrote this memo. Jen tried to, it was, we were planning on getting this to the board before she went on vacation. Unfortunately, we we sent the contract back to balance to, to, to reduce the cost, and they couldn't get it back to us before Jen left on vacation. So she okay. put this in here. And, uh, if I saw it, I didn't even see it. Um, I would put the fiscal impact in there from the new the new contract that's a, that is in the, the agenda. Because it still has the same wording in the agreement for professional services between SLBWD and Balance Head. Right. Um, that's correct. This. So I just want to. Yes, well, I we can adopt this. Yeah. Okay, Bob. I think the investment's like 800000 plus so far over the five years. Close to a million dollars. Close to a million dollars. Yes. And out of that million dollars, what have we changed operationally? Have we changed anything? You know, we, and this is my opinion, Jen may have a different opinion. We have not changed any operational, but we quantified and submitted to the agencies exactly what we're doing. The amount of water that we are, you know, diverting from the intakes, and we gave them information of the impact to the San Juanzo River that we didn't have. So, so we quantified. We quantified what we were doing. Qualitatively new anyway. Well, we knew it, but when we didn't have the data. But we didn't have the data. We didn't have it to them in a report area that they would, that they were involved in. They were involved in setting up the monitoring. You know, they were hand in hand on what we did over the last five okay. years. And I think now that they're pretty much, uh, they've kind of stepped back and said, you guys really aren't that big of a fish, no pun intended, yeah. in, uh, for the fish. in the north, in the north, so one of the, the route. One of the questions that I had is, you know, I look at the amount of surface, I look at the amount of water we produce. Mm -hmm. so I'm assuming that's what we're pulling out of our watershed. That's correct. It's about 2,000 acre feet, roughly. We get about half of that from surface, so that would be all of our surface sources between Felton and Boulder Creek. And I'm kind of curious, that's, that's about 1,000 acre feet, or 325 million gallons, more or less. How many acre feet, do we know how many acre feet each creek is flowing during a year? Yes, it's in that report. And so roughly, for example, how much does Peavine Creek flow? And we'd have, I'd have to get those. There are charts. There's, yeah, I do believe the... The, the, the Nick Johnson final report pretty much has all that in there. But my question is, are we more than a single digit percentage of the overall flow, the, what think, we're taking? I don't think so. I mean, I, uh, well, you know. look, we have that information. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I I'm just, just, I'm just curious. Yeah, it's, it's okay, but yeah. I, I mean, it's one of those things where if we're pulling out one or two percent of the overall flow, it, it's really hard but, that you're going to have an impact. You know, to, you know, I don't want to, you know, it was well, good, it was money well spent because now the agencies know. They have, they have documentation that shows how much water we pull out. The amount of water is there. They have temperature and flow studies. James even did a, uh, a uh, exercise where we turned off all of the intakes for a week, 10 days, and let that water flow in the middle of summer or during a drought. And the impact was, uh, I don't think, it was minimal, if any. That. And there's data loggers all in the streams, and they monitor flow, and you know, it was a, it was an exercise. But without the work that we did over the, over those five years or so, these questions would still be out there, uh, and we, we would still probably most likely have to go through this exercise. <coughs> and unfortunately, we had a drought time because we yeah. had the worst case scenario. Yeah, it's just it's just a shame we couldn't have looked at the overall flow at particular times and say, guys, we're at two percent. Yeah. Do we need to? Do we need to spend eight hundred thousand dollars to get to that? Uh, it's not just flows. A lot of it has to do with temperature. I, 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 that was a big thing. Critical ripple. Right. Right. 
you know, like I said, it's a shame Jen isn't here. There's a, a host of things that we did, and it wasn't just at our sources. It was all the way down to felt in the main stem, in the San Lorenzo River. We monitored flow. We monitored temperature. I mean, it was a, it was a good study. We got great information, but now we need to move on and and what we have to do to this the next. Well, we have to do this again anytime soon? I can't this? answer that question. So we're going to need to sustain it for one more year? It sounds like you have all the information that's needed. Why even spend the 48000 for another year? If so, you think Richter's going to take it over and put the money someplace else? The, the intent was to finish with just these handful of streams. Um, and I think it's because we have a wet year. Um, I know more water than, than the last year. I think it's because we had a wet year and we cut it way back. And I'm, I'm hoping that you know, we can get together with the agencies and, and, and this will be it. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean I'm, very, I'm happy to spend money on things that have real value. Well, I, I think, you know, and, from, and, from our perspective, right. it, it has a value. I mean, it has a value. It does have value. But so it looks like it's marginal, which you give it. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's something we have to do. Well, I don't know if we have to do it. It sounds like we said we would do it. Well, it, it's, okay. If we don't know what we're doing for sure, unless we do some of this stuff. Well, you know, they didn't have to come down with an, an enforcement against the district and force us to do anything. But I think if they had done that, we probably would have spent more money. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, we, we work with the agencies and uh, I think it's having a good outcome. Um, we have pro proven that our, that our sources, you know, are, don't have that big of an impact. You know, the resource agencies are always gonna want more water for fisheries. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. George. <laughs> Rick Moran for Jen Woman. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for the staff, uh, do we know how many coho salmon are in the San Lorenzo Valley watershed? I do not. Jen probably does, or there's probably somebody that's in that group that does, but I do not. Well, the last time a coho salmon was seen in the San Lorenzo Valley? Been a long time. Yeah, I think by any creek, I do believe. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I, I'm talking in an area that I don't know. So Jen, Jen did say in the environmental meeting yeah. that they were seeing them in the Zion. Right. I, th I think there was one in Long Beach. So, I saw. So they were they were happy the that there's. <laughs> no, yes. it wasn't yeah. from a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in a deep pool. Anybody else out there? And if, if the board would wish, I could you know when Jen gets back to vacation, we could agendize this again and talk about it. I mean, but I would like to move ahead with the contract, but we certainly could talk about it and get more information. Hey, Virgil, have you had your... Uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, I heard mentioned that um, that Santa Margarita board might want to take this over, and I would caution that when you lose control of your data, you lose control of information. And um, we're, it's not going to be uh, a very big cost savings because we're paying 30-40% exactly. of the Santa Margarita board anyway. And we have very little, or at least what I've witnessed so far, very little spending control in that environment. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to be cautious about what you wish for, because you might get it. Thank you. Well, I have to go along with that. If Santa Margarita does it, it's probably going to cost more money. I, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, you, you'll be, as a board member on that board, you'll be able to discuss that and we'll be able to work with that. But that's a possibility. Well, but, well and then I really need to know what I'm talking about. I need to get those people to stop spending so much money. They just willy-nilly, hey, here's 100000 We need this, this, and this. So it's like you don't even get to talk. Well, we, you do have a seat as a board member. I know. And I know. you can voice concerns and vote. 
I just don't want to give us any worse of a name than we've already got. Okay? <laughs> um, sorry. So, does the board want this to come back, or do you want to deal with this now? I'm, I'm fine with dealing with it now. How about you? We're all fine it's with it. It's already in the budget we approved, so it's... Yeah. That's so correct. And it's less than budgeted. Yes. So... So we're ready to do this. Let's make a motion. Who's the motion person here? Uh, let's see. I move that we authorize the district manager to execute the water year 2019 spring flow salinity and temperature monitoring contract with balance hydraulics. Also, I have motion, sorry, hydrologics. Okay. I'm sorry, who seconded? I yes. Lou did. did. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. <coughs> President Henry? Uh, yes. Director Swan? Yes. Okay. Moving on to item C, Mr. Rogers. Okay, can we hold on just a moment so I can um, change, we have to change the phone situation. Uh-oh. We're gonna hang up with Gina and call into the conference line and then Catherine and Chris are gonna bridge in. Gina, I'm hanging up on you now. Okay, great. And then you're gonna call into the conference line. Welcome to Open Voice Audio Services. Please enter your conference room number followed by the pound or hash sign. Conference room number accepted. If you are the organizer, press the star key now. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound or hash sign. <laughs> For a menu of available commands, press star 1. There is one other caller on the call. Sounds like another one. Hello? Anybody there? I just, this is Gina. I believe Catherine and Chris are here as well. This is Catherine. I'm online. Hello. Okay. Hi. This is Chris Jones. Catherine is now coming to you from Fox Rothschild instead of Nassiman, which is part of what we're um, talking about tonight. <laughs> but, um, Stephanie, were you going to kick off this item before we get into the, the legal specifics? Um, I wasn't necessarily planning on it. I figured we should just follow the, the resolutions. I mean, I could just touch briefly on um, it went out for pricing on, um, oh, where's the calendar? On Monday and Tuesday. Um, it ended up being, I mean, Chris can chime in, he knows a little bit more about it, but it's uh, $14.5 million that we'll have coming um, in about two weeks at 2.9% interest. That's roughly how it all went. Chris said it went really well. Um, we got in before the feds made their announcement because it was unsure what that would do to the markets, um, as well as coming Monday. Uh, Chris, how much money did you say is about to go on the market? Oh, uh, it's uh, half a billion to a billion <clears throat> in the next, in the beginning of, uh, of next week. And so, so it's, essentially, it's a lot of, we hit. You'll be competing against better credits and, you know, so. so the timing was very nice that it was a, a low end of the market. Um, and like he says, we aren't competing next week with all of these other options that people would have. 
so we, we priced very close to Livermore's Unlimited GOs, which is a double A3 rating. On its long end bonds, we we're approximately 15 basis points off of their pricing. Uh, so I think that was a, that was a real win. We ended up shortening the call. I know a couple of the board members had mentioned they were concerned about having a long par call at 15 years. We shortened it to 10 years. Uh, which is why we didn't generate as much premium as we hoped, but that's because of the shorter call. But it's better benefit to the district after shorter call, so it worked out all right in that regard. Excuse me, can you explain that for everybody, Chris, just to make sure we're all up with you? The, the shorter call. Uh, so the we had a parameters resolution was for a 15 year call at par, so we shortened it in pricing to 10 year call. Can you explain the 10 year versus 15 year call, please? Yeah, so in 10 years, the district can, can pay off the bond with no restrictions. There's no premium or anything in 10 years. Versus 15 years, the district would have to wait for 15 years. But um, you know, 10 years is more advantageous to the district. Does that mean, the, does that mean prepayment then? Prepayment? There's no prepayment there. No, no prepayment. They're payable at par in in uh, 29. It's, this is Catherine. The terminology from the bond documents that we all looked at last week for the COPs is called prepayment. That's the same idea as the bond call or a bond redemption. But for the certificates of participation and in the documents we looked at last week, it was called prepayment. And what you're thinking is maybe have a prepayment premium. All of these bonds in 10 years will be prepayable without any extra premium or any extra percentage being owed to the bond holders or certificate holders. But until that time, there would be a premium that would be paid. Until that time, it, there are some strategies that we can use to do what's called an advance for funding, but we're really very, very limited by the tax law that was passed back in late 2016, or in 2017. Um, there was, we used to be able to refund whenever the market would move in a way that would make interest rates lower, and we would be able to achieve some interest rate savings by doing so. But the tax, the, uh, the tax law took that right away from public agency borrowers. And so now we really, you know, we try to get the shortest period to call that we can that the market will take in our debt documents, so we don't have the same flexibility to refund early. Now, you know, on the flip side, there's always a chance that interest rates could go lower, but the this interest rate that, you know, we just smartly sold the bonds at this week is really very, very close to, his, to a historic all-time low to date. And so your odds of being able to issue additional debt and use that the proceeds of that to reach to pay off these COPs. Once you factor in things like paying lawyers, paying an underwriter, getting everything all papered and going to market with it, the odds of you achieving any kind of savings, which you would be required to, to achieve those savings by California law, are very, very slim. Yeah, so it's, it's the option of the district in, 20, in 2029 to decide to refund and they can do that at no penalty, I guess is the gist of it. Uh, but if there's no call okay. we'll until that period. Yeah. yeah, just by comparison, I guess we have two loans. The lowest is 2.42%, the phone loan, and the Olympia is 2.57, so we're, you know, 0. 0.4 difference basically, which is really close. Yeah, the, phone yeah, but loan the big difference between those yeah. and the others is the term. Yes, right, thirty year term. If we were to do a five year loan like the other one, you'd be looking at a one. Yeah, okay. And that's my point: is that we're just like right on the edge of being a phenomenal deal. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Well, it is phenomenal. I mean, you know, I don't. I, you know, I, at the end of the day, I think <laughs> we hit the market pretty darn good. I sent over sort of the historical analysis on the yield curve, and the lowest we've seen it was. In, in, since I've been doing this, um, and probably since most of the folks, uh, well, let's see, back when the depression occurred, we saw uh, the treasury rates at this historical lows, and they were like that for 25 years, right? 
So in today's market, the last time we saw the lowest point was in 2016. It's risen. As we all know, the rates went up pretty high, and then they dropped back down. And they were only in 2016 at that low level for about a year, year and a half. So, you know, who's to say? They could maintain a flat level right now, but I, I don't I mean, who knows? But I think it's still a pretty darn good timing from, a, from an issuer standpoint. That's great. Ricky and I will spend that money next year. Okay, so I think we're probably ready yeah. then to move into the um, resolution. And okay, Catherine, can you explain the cleanup items that are the subject of the resolution before the board? Sure. So we have two documents that are included in the packet this week. The first one is an amendment to the installment purchase agreement that the district entered into with Capital One last December. And there were just a few tweaks that when we when we put together the documents for the COP, we decided it would be prudent to make specifically to clarify that the specific Lompico assessments and the specific Olympia assessments are not included in the revenues that can be used to repay this debt. Um, the, the prior installment purchase contract stated that, but it did not state it in a way that's as clear as what we have put into the COP document. So we just want that, we want those documents to match for purposes of easy administration going forward. And we also have made a, a tweak to the uh, parity debt test just to clarify that that will when we calculate that test, we calculate it based on all of the outstanding debt of the district. So we're going to be presenting that to Capital One and having that amendment hopefully go in place concurrently with the document signing for the closing of the COP next week. Um, and the other document is an agreement from my new firm, Fox Rothschild, that just permits, uh, permits me to continue to provide bond counsel and uh, special counsel and disclosure counsel services for the district from my new, uh, my new employment. So do we have questions from the audience? Uh, Virgil? Yes, um, I, I agree with everyone that this is an incredibly good deal. And I think it's really important when you start thinking about, well, you know, it could have been a little lower, higher to the number one rule is to not be greedy thank you very much for this Rick Moran did you want to say yeah. anything um, so last time uh, we had an easy way to do this resolution without saying all this stuff it was just what resolution number let Gina do it. Okay, Gina, could you do it? We just, uh, sure, we just need a motion um, to adopt resolution number 41920. Okay. okay. I move that the um, board adopt resolution number 41920. I'll second it. Okay. Holly? Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. And when does the money come in? Uh, it should be the 14th. So there's going to be closing docs that are getting signed next week. Um, and then it should go to the trustee, and then the trustee can wire us the money. I believe the 14th is the. Okay. So two weeks, basically, just yeah. before the party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess engineering had a great meeting today and they got all that money. <laughs> uh, now, do we need more? <laughs> Is there anything else? Or did that one resolution cover the multiple? That all covers. Okay, perfect. Okay, Thank everyone. You. Thank, Thank you, you for participation. I'm going to have to hang up now. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. <laughs> so, Gina, you call back. <laughs> Are you there? I'm here. Okay, Gina's back on the line.
Yeah. Okay. Oh, and yeah, the difference is we get the money up front. Right. Right. Absolutely. We don't have to wait. Yeah. Right. That's oh, one. A mighty big difference. This is great so far. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're yes. on to new business. And. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, item A. Uh, and I, I don't know if the applicant's here. I don't know, but uh, the, the Southern Valley Water District policy minimum provides for five standing committees and the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency directors. We have the admin, budget finance, engineering, environmental, La Pico oversight, Santa Margarita groundwater. Uh, at the June 20th, 2019 board meeting, the board directed staff to extend the time for applications to the engineering and, and the La Pico assessment district oversight committee until the positions are filled. We have received uh, one application for the LADAC committee on um, June 28, 2019, his application is in your packet. It's recommended the board review the attached application and consider the appointment of Norman uh, as it, Hagen to the LADOC committee. And I'll turn it over to you. Uh, his application is attached. Okay. Um, so. We do have one member from that committee here. I wonder if she wants to say anything before the board talks about it. I am very pleased that someone applied for this, and I would hope that the board would approve it so we can start building our committee back up to five. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any comment by board members? Do, are you, do you know this guy? I don't believe I do. Anybody know this guy? Somebody I just know. met him recently. I do not. Uh, oh, Darren, our Darren. engineer. Darren just met him. Yeah. He's a, he said he's a nice, yeah. nice guy. Walks up right. <laughs> <laughs> but who lives on Long Pico Road? Where it is. Of course, who lives on Lake Boulevard? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Any, any questions by board members about this film? Do you know this person? I do not. And I've lived there longer than anybody years. else in this room. <laughs> so no, I don't have a clue. But hey, I think what, that we ought to just approve him. I don't know why he isn't here, if he was unable to come for some reason or I did let him know and I sent him a copy of the uh, agenda yeah okay but I, I wish he were here I we need somebody for that committee and they are not beating down the doors of the district to sign up it's very work. exclusive <laughs> <laughs> it is very exclusive. And there, if there's issues down the road, you can always remove some of them. That's what you're worried about. <laughs> no, uh, I, I have no worries about I, the board. Uh, yeah. I don't have any worries. What's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> oh, why did I even ask? <laughs> You'll be the same place two weeks from now that you are now, so go ahead. Yeah. Right. So, since I'm from Long Pico, I don't want to make a mo motion. Do, do anybody else in the community? Nobody right. else here is from Long Pico. <laughs> okay, well, I'll move that we accept uh, Norman Hagen as a member of the Long Pico Assessment District Oversight Committee. One second. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Okay. So, the next, what happened to my agenda? It went for a walk. <laughs> um, 
Um, so the reserve fund policy is the next item. Here. Yes, and the uh, director of finance is here to present this report. The budget and finance committee has been working on updating the district's reserve fund policy. Um, the prior policy was outdated. Um, this is getting us in line with GASB 54 and also establishing um, better definitions of the reserve funds and how they are calculated um, to where it's, you know, four and a half months of the operating budget in that current, you know, fiscal year. Where before it was putting hard numbers, which made the document potentially stale after a couple years. So this should make it so that the reserve fund policy should be able to stand on its own. And then annually, we are just looking at um, updating any of the appendix, which is a little bit easier. Seems like these classifications are a little easier for people to understand. <laughs> Yeah, I think Mike Steffi did a great job in assembling and putting it together. Yeah, like and then just together. so then the Appendix A is going over what we think the fiscal year 1920 estimated balances will be at, and that's um, coming up about $2 million from what we think they're ending at this year. So, this upcoming budget um, year that we're now in uh, should be generating approximately $2 million going into the reserve fund. So, that's from um, um, reduction in operating costs or keeping those relatively flat, the rate increase, and then funding um, a lot of these capital projects with debt is helping us build our reserves back up. So one question. How, how much of that is, how much additional money is being generated by the rate increase? The rate increases, it's, I don't know for this exact year, but it's between five and six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I think I saw around 600. Yeah, it's somewhere right around that. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I have a question. <clears throat> it looks like four of the five reserve funds are going to be, are projected to be at the target level by the end of FY1920. The other one that doesn't make it is the capital improvements, and it falls short by 2.75 million out of the 3.75 million. So I, my question is, how did we get, or how, how did we peg the target level at 150 million times 2.5%? Why, why that number? Why is that the magic number? Well, I guess well, we let me, me go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, explain, because this, this really came out of my <laughs> point thinking. Just estimate. So it was it's all <laughs> estimate. I mean, and this, I think, will be, we will substitute the real uh, replacement cost number for our infrastructure once we, know. once we know it, which hopefully will come up here sometime in the next year or so. And we're counting on you to help deliver that. Um, and the 2.5% is basically saying, well, you know, if we have to replace, um, you know, if the average life of the infrastructure is four years, that's 2.5%. We should keep a year of that in reserve. Now, at some point, we might want to say we could do a year and a half or not so much, what have you. But that seemed to be a reasonable <laughs> number if we got into a situation where there was either grant funding that came up and we wanted to grab some of the money, or you know the the, the lion slide situation maybe gets worse than we think it is, or other things like that. The the key on the reserves, in my opinion, is replenishing them, right? And um, if you're going to use the reserves in that fashion, you have to have a plan to replenish them. And what we're trying to do right now is, in fact, do that. So hopefully next year, more money will go into the capital improvements reserve than in the others, because that's the one that needs to be refreshed. Mm -hmm. So when do we think we'll hit the 3.75 million target level for capital improvements? Next year? Probably the year after. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we really think 40 years is an expected, average expected life expectancy? So, like... That's a little high from, yeah. from what, what I'm used to, but it's not unreasonable. But, but if we start getting rid of the redwood tanks uh, and replace them with tanks that are going to live longer... And get rid of pipe that's uh, metal and replace it with... With other kinds. Yeah, I mean, but, but that is, that's part of what the engineering, so it could be that the engineering committee comes back and this is all 
all wrong, that it's 250 million and the average life is 30 years. I, I don't even know that when the master plan is done. Okay. Well, that's, that's right, and, and that's what... Average um, life, 30 years, that doesn't sound like much. Well, it sounds way too low, but I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm willing, I mean, we need to rely on what the experts yeah, yeah. come back with. Well, James, what do you think? I have no clue what you're talking about. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> Talk about putting somebody on the spot. I've never seen reasonable to keep in the bank for a rainy day. For a disaster? Just yeah, seems no, like... Yeah, I mean, you look at what 2017 did to us, and there's over $3.5 million worth of damage just in that storm alone, so... Yeah. It all depends on what... The catastrophic failure is, and how could there's potential with an earthquake I mean, where we can't spend it that fast. Right. Right. I mean, the operating reserve fund also will help yeah. cover some. Yes. You know, the, I mean, that's where yeah. those both of those funds could are going to be used going towards something like that. Yeah. But, but my sense was, that as we go through this, given the nature of where we live, and given the catastrophic things that can happen, especially given the age of our infrastructure, that we should try to be a little more on the conservative side than the optimistic side. So, for example, on the monthly, you know, you read anywhere from three to six months when you, when you go online, you kind of split the difference in that. At some point, we may want to look, well, do we need to push it up to six, you know, given the nature of what we might run into. And as Bob mentioned, within about hopefully a year, this master plan is going to be done, and we'll have a better idea yeah. for when we go through the budget process next year on updating if we want to change the 150, the 150 at two and a half. Now, keep in mind the other things competing for that money will be deferred maintenance meters, uh, how fast we need to re be replacing those, and so those are things that we need to get a better handle on as well over the next year to be able to figure out where does money go, pensions. Reserves, infrastructure, deferred, you know, there's a lot of places to spend money on it. Yeah. Bye. You, you got any questions? Just, just a question about the PTO accrual policy. What's, what's the limit on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to look at that. Each MOU has different um, accrual rates. It's it it scary. It all depends on how long you've been here. Yeah, so it's, it's tiered. So I mean, you have six, you have four or five different levels that you'd have to look at the MOUs for. What's but we're that? hearing about five hundred thousand. Uh, it is cool. one and a half times a full year. So that means. Four hundred eighty dollars is the is what's the max. So effectively, 12, 12 weeks. 12 weeks. 12 weeks of uh, PTO to carry. I get to carry three, but it's a different, different conversation. Yeah, I can do it in 80 hours. I was just curious to see where it was. We've had people at the district that got injured outside of the district, and they've been out of work for a long time and depleted their whole PTO. Through that, because it's not work, workers' comp, they're not getting compensated from anything else. They have to take their PTO. I mean, you mean they had a like an accident, a sporting yeah. accident? Yeah, or, or accident. you know, an injury outside of work. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Well, well, that'll be a different conversation about short-term, long-term disability and that sort of thing, because usually those are covered under that. But I, right. I get your point. How about anybody <laughs> out there, <laughs> Virgil? <laughs> You're talking it tonight. Keep it coming. Bro. That's good. Uh, when you, it always makes me nervous when you say the average life expectancy of your stuff. Please don't forget the, don't forget the median. It depends on on the distribution of your lifetimes. The mean may be inappropriate. That's all. And, and Virgil, once the information comes back, I expect Darren to give us a lot better numbers than what we have now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 I got. It. Thank you. Well, gee, I thought the older you get, the longer you live. Doesn't that go for chance? Yeah, the longer it seems you live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else out there have anything they want to say? And. 
board members are done. Staff doesn't have anything else to say. I guess we're going to approve this or what? It's just information. No, it's, it's a motion. It's a motion. Okay. Oh. The motion to what? The motion to adopt the, the policy. reserve fund yeah. policy. Yeah. No, we just I make a write, motion. No, I didn't write one out, but yeah, I mean, it would literally just be a motion to adopt the reserve fund yeah. policy. Okay. okay. We make a motion to adopt the reserve fund policy. I'll second that motion. Okay. Holly? Director Paris? Aye. Director Pauls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. One box to close. <laughs> okay, uh, item C. Uh, by motion, we're requesting you change the date of the second regular board of directors meeting in August, from August 15th to August 28, 2019, to be conducted at the regular time and location. Um, on July 23rd, uh, 2019, the board of directors of the, the district decided to set the August 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, as the closing date for receipt of applications to fill the board seat recently vacated, vacated by uh, Director Spalman. Uh, August 22nd was chosen to allow more time for statutory required notice prior to or prior in light of summer vacation schedule. In conjunction with board action, the board also expressed interest in postponing the second regular board meeting in August, which is currently scheduled for August 15th. Uh, postponing the August 15th meeting would allow the district to include uh, the applications received by August 22nd in the board packet for the second regular meeting in August so that the board can review and discuss them at that meeting. Uh, should the board not reach a decision uh, at the post at the postponed August meeting, the board would have another opportunity to deliberate during the first regular board meeting in September prior to the district's deadline to notify the county of the board's decision. I believe, just to clarify, the applications are due August 21st by 5 p.m. Yeah, no? That's correct. No. Is that correct? It says 22nd in the packet. It says 22nd. It says 22nd 21st. 21st is the day there. It I, is. I think it just meant to be that the meeting that we're trying okay. to have. Gina, do you have any comment on that? Or is uh, that would have been my typo. I must have written August 22nd in okay. my notes. So no problem. Apologies. But the official um, closing time will be what was in the notice. That <coughs> okay. So, are, are we going to have a regular board meeting that night? Are we going to have all the reports and the finance and yes okay that is correct all right anybody else have a question yeah uh, any questions from the audience are you leaving <laughs> <laughs> come on virgil <laughs> not at this time <laughs> okay thank you so So we're, that's just motion. Motion. Motion, motion to change the meeting. Where's the motion? <laughs> right here. I move that uh, the uh, board reschedule the second regular board meeting for the August 21st at regular time and location. 28th. 28th. And that is a Wednesday. Yep. 28th is a Wednesday. Should it be the 29th? No, it's supposed to be the 28th. It's supposed to be the 28th. Okay. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pauls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, Item D. One quick second. Okay. 
Uh, you have uh, in your packet tonight a resolution of appreciation for Bill Smallman. Bill Smallman uh, served on the board of directors for the San Jose Valley Water District for two and a half years, beginning in 2016. Uh, during Mr. Smallman's tenure on the board, he was instrumental in banning glyphosate, a probable human carcinogenic, uh, from the use of all district properties, as well as rate restructuring process and stewardship of the watershed. Recommended that the board review and adopt the uh, attached resolution of appreciation for Director Small. Any comment from the board here? I'd also like to say that in addition to the things that are listed here in this, on this resolution, that uh, Director Small was also a director of the Long Pico Water Board and was instrumental, well, in, instrumental involved, whatever the word is and bringing 500 very valued customers to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. And um, that it, it was also, I think, um, I know he wasn't on our board when he did it, but it was also something that does benefit us. And um, you know, I just wanted to mention that as, as part of um, the recognition. Of that. <coughs> yeah. I had made some notes, which I forgot at home, so I'll try to remember them all. Um, I've known Bill about 10 years, and while I didn't agree with him on a lot of things, both in Long Pico and here, we were really <coughs> friends and had a lot of really good discussions, and yeah, arguments, but he was always pretty decent about it. Um, I think what you don't read about Bill Smallman, what we probably didn't see enough of here, was his amazing background in water systems engineering and project management. And if you ever had an opportunity to sit down with Bill and talk about the things, you would have been blown away. Um, and I would also like to say, in Long Pico, he was really instrumental. He was one of the key people that helped Long Pico join SLV. And a lot of it is because of his engineering background, and he really focused on the practical reasons that Long Pico needed to join SLV. There was a wash with emotion during the whole um, discussion and voting, but Bill really narrowed it down, and I think he was really instrumental in that. And being on the board at the right time. And Bill definitely walked to a different beat. He thought outside the box, which made him a target for a lot of people because he just didn't have the savvy for all, all the politics. But he definitely knew his engineering, and I think he was a real asset to the district. Any more comments? Okay. I move that we uh, adopt resolution, Senator Resolution Number 5, 1920, Resolution of Appreciation for Director Small. I'll second that motion. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. So will, will that get to him? Yes. So, yes. yes. so, so um, you get to meet you first. So, damn glad to meet you. Yeah, I mean, it's a great picture. It's like I saw that at the post office. Too. Was, was, that that a, <laughs> was that a lot dead or alive? Was that at 2 a.m. out of hand, please? <laughs> no, but it sure looks like it. Mm. Okay. So, um, <laughs> This is uh, this is Gina. I just wanted to ask, has, in help my recollection, has the district traditionally read the resolutions of appreciation into the record? And if so, would it be appropriate to do that for Director Smallman? Yes. 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 Holly, you do Actually, too, but I have uh, I'll take a step. Right. Uh, a subject is a resolution number 5, 19-20, a resolution of appreciation for Director Smallman, whereas on December 15, 2016, William Smallman was sworn in as an elected member of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, and whereas Director Smallman continuously served in his capacity on the Board of Directors for a period of two and a half years, and whereas Director Smallman was dedicated to the proper management and protection of the district's watershed property and the environmental health of the entire San Lorenzo River watershed, 
and whereas Director Smallman was instrumental in banning the use of glyphosate, a probable human carcinogenic, from the use of district properties, and whereas district whereas Director Smallman was involved in the District <coughs> Engineering Committee, often imparting his knowledge of water systems for the good of the district, and whereas Director Smallman was involved in setting the district up for financial uh, liability, viable future to fund capital improvements and build reserves. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District that William H. Smallman be commended and thanks for his years of dedicated service that he uh, has the respect of all who has have worked with him and that his efforts and dedication will be missed. Um, yes. Could we make sure, could the water district make sure that the press banner gets a copy of that so that it could be in the Valley newspaper? That's not what we usually we do. We usually don't do that. But it's uh, is there a press release? Could that, no? Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually they write a scathing article and send it into the press banner and that's it. <laughs> I.e. Margaret Bruce. <coughs> okay. Uh, any other comments? No. And the resolution has been read and motion is made and seconded. So we didn't vote yet. <laughs> it's That's just getting so late. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So um, there's informational material on meeting Lou Ferris, press banner, um, the Santa Cruz plan for sustainable water, Sentinel, and second water leader resigns. I, I thought the Sentinel article was a little snarky. That's just my opinion. Sorry. I guess I don't get to make a comment, but I just did. You just did. Sorry. So, can we adjourn this meeting? I think so. Yes. 747. 747? No.